Hi, welcome to the instructional video of UTEST UTS 2060 direct and residual shear testing machine. This is the main frame of the uh, machine and uh, th uh, this machine is supplied with these uh, fixtures and apparatus as well. Let's uh, start with the apparatus supplied with the machine first. The, <clears throat> the direct shear machine uh, is supplied with the direct sh uh, shearing, shearing box uh, assembly, a top cap, porous stones, perforated plates, and the uh, base plate of the, this uh, shearing box appar uh, apparatus. And it also has uh, a cutting color from the soil specimens and the uh, specimen re uh, extractor an Ethernet cable, load cell, power cable, and two uh, displacement transducers. The machine is transported inside of a wooden box uh, in which all uh, the fixtures are placed in a uh, secure position. Before uh, installation, remove the wooden box without uh, damaging the machine and uh, place the uh, machine in a flat horizontal surface and uh, you should also uh, check the horizontality of the whole device uh, with a bubble scale. It should be uh, horizontal within the uh, limits which has been defined in the related standards. After doing that you can fix uh, the machine from its legs to the ground. You can uh, bolt, bolt them. You, as you can see there are two holes per leg and you can fix them to the ground and uh, the place that you will going to uh, <coughs> place the machine uh, should be a, a, a vibrating free environment. It shouldn't be any shaking, any destructions because it will all affect the normal and the horizontal loading uh, regimes. Let's continue by investigating the parts of this machine. The controller unit of this machine is a TFT screen, which is a touch screen actually, a controlling unit, which is mounted uh, here, and also emergency safety uh, button. We have an arm to place vertical displacement transducer, and the horizontal displacement transducer is going to be placed over here into this slotted part. We have a yoke for the application of normal uh, force. For the horizontal displacement, we have a horizontal displacement rod. And uh, in order to slide the shearing box <coughs> easily and with the uh, minimum friction, horizontal rollers mounted over here. And also we have a uh, opening, I mean a gap, gap for the uh, low cell. And we, the last part of this machine is the uh, loading arm, which, will be, which, will, which can be arranged as 1 to 9, 1 to 10, and 1 to 11 ratios, which means that if you put one, uh, 10 kilograms over here, it will be uh, 100 kilograms normal load uh, on the yoke and on the specimen. Now, uh, let's start to... Uh, install our device one by one by using its fixtures and apparatus. Let's start by mounting the load cell first. It is actually really easy to mount this device. We are going to place this one here and just tighten the screw until it reaches to the end. And the other one here. It is tight enough and because of this rod over here it is easy to move in this direction but just transfers the load in the horizontally without any um, deflection. Okay. Second one we are going to mount are the transducers. This is 10 millimeters 
range uh, displacement transducer which has a sensitivity of 0.001 millimeters and it will be inserted here on a slotted ground. After we insert this transducer we are going to just uh, tighten the screw and it will be uh, fixed and it will not move in the vertical direction. Let's put it over here. And the second displacement transducer is for the horizontal displacement which will be mounted on this slotted area. We are going to need a screwdriver for that. We are again just sliding this LVDT inside the slot and after we are going to just squeeze this, these screws and it is fixed as you can see it, it, is, it cannot move in the horizontal direction. Now let's see the rear part of this uh, machine. We have a, a vertical displacement uh, connection over here and horizontal displacement connection and the load cell connection over here RS232 which will be not uh, necessary for this case and then on and off button here and we have an inlet for the power cable. Uh, let's start inserting these into their places. For load cell, as you can understand, it will be replaced here. And the second one is horizontal displacement transducer, which will be uh, placed into the horizontal displacement socket. And the last one is for the vertical displacement, and it will be fixed over here. And we have also a power cable which is supplied with the machine, of course, will be placed here. The machine is suitable for uh, the determination of the cohesion value and the internal friction angle value uh, on both uh, sand and soil materials soil materials which will um, uh, composed of clay and other, any other type of soil material and for the sake of this video we are going to uh, prepare our specimen with using uh, standard uh, test sand which is over here uh, let's start assembling the shearing box upper assembly we have two plastic screws these are actually made of plastic because Sometimes the users may forget to remove these pins and the machine get, uh, made it uh, damage because of th this mistake. In order to prevent this happening, we are using plastic screws. Now after fixing these uh, bottom and uh, top part, we are going to place this uh, bottom plate at the very bottom of this shearing box assembly. And on top of the bottom plate we are going to insert one of the porous stones and the perforated plates which will be the uh, slotted parts will face upwards. And this is uh, the end of <coughs> uh, bottom layers. Now we are going to place our sand here, trying to distribute the sand homogeneously. Okay. 
Now, uh, as you may see, the uh, upper part of the specimen has some irregular uh, surface, and we are going to make a flat surface by using this apparatus. Now we have uh, placed the uh, testing sand inside the shearing box assembly and after inserting the uh, specimen we are going to place the perforated plate on top of the specimen. Uh, the important thing about this is the, uh, these uh, lines and slots should be perpendicular to the shearing direction which will be in this direction and it has to be placed in this way. On top of it Again, we are going to place the porous stone and at the very top we are going to place the top cap. Again, the lines should be perpendicular to the shearing direction. And this is the uh, correct assemblage of the shearing, uh, shearing box assembly. Now we have prepared our specimen. Now let's uh, initiate the device. While the system is initiating, I'm going to put this shearing box into its place. After the initiation, uh, the first uh, menu that we are going to see on the screen is main menu. In the main menu we have uh, load, vertical displacement and horizontal displacement, live values. And there is a, a stress which will be calculated according to the selection of the direct shear box. For example, in the same load value it will be different in 60 by 60 millimeters square and uh, 100 by 100 uh, millimeters square they will all be different uh, and in this uh, loads vertical and horizontal displacement uh, values there are tear buttons before starting the test after everything is assembled and everything is in place we uh, you should tear, uh, tear all the values to start from the zero and in the uh, in the load segment, you are going to observe the tailed load in the parentheses. For example, it is uh, 1.9 newtons right now, which is almost zero. Whenever you tear this uh, load before starting the test, you will just see in the parentheses is tear 1.4 newtons. Uh, and the second group of buttons, uh, which are accumulated in the uh, bottom right corner, are home, jog, stop and start test buttons. Let me explain the functions of these buttons. Home button, uh, we have an initial uh, test start position which is fixed in this machine. Whenever we press this button, uh, it will just uh, shift back according to, the, uh, to you. It will shift to the right side and find the home position. And the second one is a jog uh, button which will be uh, for example, if you want to arrange uh, a different position in the beginning, you can press this one and it, the uh, all shearing box assembly and the system will come uh, to the left side uh, which, uh, with a determined speed. And the stop is just uh, stops all the operations over here. And after everything is uh, set, you're, you're going to just uh, press the uh, test, start test button and the test will be initialized. Let me just demonstrate these ones. For example, now the, all the system and the shearing apparatus is shifting towards left and whenever I press stop, it stops. And ever, uh, whenever I press this home button, you just command the machine to go to the home position, initial position. And if you, you don't have to uh, press stop button, it will just <clears throat> find the home position automatically. As you can see, it's stopped. And in here, with small uh, phrases, you can see it is in the home position, motor stopped, and there is no alert, which means uh, safety switches are not 
give any alerts to the system. And over here you can also see some uh, basic information about the test conditions right now. For example, it says test number 283. Test stopped right now since it is in the stop position. And test speed is uh, selected uh, as one millimeters per minute, which we can, uh, will show in a shortly how to change the, those. Test type, conditional overflow, area, square. Actually, whenever you put the 60 by 60 uh, <coughs> option, the area will be uh, calculated and shown over here automatically. Now, uh, in, in this area, we will just uh, observe uh, uh, live graph uh, distribution and this has two options which is stress displacement which is uh, shown right now and the second tab here is plot settings you can use either fixed axis <coughs> which you can assign the x uh, axis values which is in the ordinate and the uh, <coughs> abscissa or you can put this option, which is recommended. It will just make an auto-scaling. Whenever uh, it reaches to the boundaries of the screen, it will just make the scaling automatically. And you can reset plot here, over, over here. And uh, by selecting this button, you will just come back to the uh, <coughs> initial screen. Now, the second tab on this menu is parameters. Uh, this, has, this tab has uh, three subsections inside it. One of them is test type. In test type, we have, uh, this machine has, uh, gives the three options. One of them is conditional overflow. It, it means that whenever you choose this uh, option, the machine will start the test with an identified speed and then goes uh, until the uh, failure occurs. In the second one, conditional horizontal displacement go, which means you are going to enter a distance. For example, we are at the home position and we just want to observe the behavior of this uh, specimen until three millimeters. And whenever you press OK, it will just in the uh, parameters. Uh, conditional horizontal displacement go and return option. Uh, you, again, you are going to define a target value which will be sheared, let's say it's again 6 millimeters or 10 millimeters, whatever you choose. Uh, it will just go to the <coughs> 6 millimeters. And uh, you can, let's say, in minutes, let's say we, you want uh, your specimen to wait. For example, if you are going to make a wet shearing, you want your uh, excess pore pressure inside the specimen to dissipate. For, that's why you have to uh, wait for a while. Uh, let's say we are going to wait, let's say, 15 minutes or more. You, are, you can choose the return speed. They are defined in the, the standards, uh, for example, in the British standards, uh, cyclic test section. Uh, you're just going to define a re uh, return speed um, all the calculations about the return speeds are defined in those standards. For example, let's say we want our uh, machine to return to home position with, let's say, 5 millimeters per minute. If you want to conduct this uh, same cycle, let's say for 5 times, 6 times, and whatever you s the cycle number you want, you're just going to enter the cycle number, let's say, 3 cycles. Now, it will just make the same movement. It will go to the 6 millimeters come back with the 5 millimeters per minute. It will just wait 15 minutes and it will uh, just repeat this cycle for three times. And second option over here is the test parameters. This is the test speed, which is uh, the, the speed that will be uh, used in the shearing operation during the test. And the home direction speed. Whenever you press the home, the home button in the uh, main page, it will use this speed to uh, go back to the home direction. And jog direction, also here, uh, you can assign a jog jogging speed 
to the uh, to the uh, jog button in the main screen. Let's say it's all arranged like 10, but you can change it. And now uh, the maximum displacement is uh, a safety parameter, uh, which has been assigned uh, 15 millimeters as X factory. You can assign 20 millimeters, 25 millimeters, which is actually about the range of this uh, device. Uh, don't worry, but there is also a safety, safety switch embedded inside. And the maximum load is uh, another safety parameters to just prevent uh, the load cell to um, experience extreme loading conditions. Uh, since the capacity of our S-type load cell is 5,000 uh, newtons, uh, 5 kilonewtons, uh, this, this uh, 5,000 newton value has been input here. Failure threshold parameter is uh, set to 200 newtons as X factory, but it can be changed. Let's say in the beginning of the test, you have small settlements both in the shear box assembly and the, even in the specimen, which may uh, cause sudden uh, the jumps and drops in the load in small values, but it will, they will act like some uh, failure has been occurred. Uh, in order to prevent that, we just put a, uh, a failure threshold uh, under which the machine will not detect any failure and just continue the test. Zero suppression parameter is set to 10 newtons as X factory. Uh, it means that the machine will not display any load under 10 newtons in the main uh, screen. And the break percentage is set by 20%. Whenever you reach the peak value of load or stress, and uh, after failure, uh, the load values and the stress values will um, decrease. And the machine will understand the failure has occurred according to these parameters. For example, you put a specimen and start to uh, shear the specimen, and the load values are, uh, will be increasing step by step. Let's say you reach at 1,000 newtons, as a peak point, and uh, after failure, the load values will be decreasing. And let's say it's 20% uh, per of 1,000 newtons is 800 uh, newtons. Whenever uh, the load value reaches uh, 800 newtons, the machine will understand that the failure has occurred, and it will just automatically stop the tests. In this in this screen. Uh, upper right corner we have a normal load uh, box. Uh, let's say for example we are going to uh, put some slotted weights on our loading arm and it will uh, create a normal load in this yoke and uh, we, we are going to ins uh, put that value here as a normal load. So it's, let's say 100 Newton, 150 Newtons and in the right, uh, bottom right corner, we have a record data uh, button. It will just go on and off. After every test, the device will produce a TXT file, which will include the uh, peak load, peak stress, and uh, residual stress, and uh, test number, and so on. Uh, if you want to obtain more detailed uh, data, which is <coughs> raw data, uh, you can uh, press this button. It will just go on and off. Uh, it is optional. But the TXT file will be produced no matter what you do. It will just, it's, uh, it's just a standard um, result uh, format. If you, as, as I said, uh, if you want to obtain more detailed raw data, you just uh, choose it from here. And the uh, last tab, uh, subsection in the parameters tab, is uh, specimen tab, the, uh, which will include the s uh, specimen type. You can choose either square or round according to your shearing box assembly. Uh, we will just use uh, square, and the width of this square is uh, 60 millimeters, and the calculated area is displaced. Uh, just beneath the uh, 
these boxes. And the third tab is uh, test results tab. <coughs> you can op observe, since we didn't uh, conduct any tests, these are all blank, but you can observe or input a test number, test start time, specimen type, and all these uh, predetermined parameters you can see from here. For example, in here it says that in, it says that uh, <coughs> it's these are results for 283rd test. For example, if you want to observe, let's say, uh, second test, you just type it two over here and get results for second tests. Um, and for example, if you in the uh, test parameters you have just defined uh, a test and you assign the test number and if you want to change that number you're just going to uh, make that, that change from here for example it's the uh, fifth test for example um, and this is all for the test results and the calibration and the admin uh, tabs are uh, password protected and as you can see uh, they are locked Let's leave those uh, calibration and admin uh, tabs for now and just move on to the info uh, tab. This in, in the info uh, tab, we have uh, four se uh, sections over here. The first one is the company name. I mean, it is the uh, Utest Material Testing Equipments, and you have some contact numbers and board version, firmware version, version and the software version of it. You can change the theme uh, from here. It is the black team has been chosen uh, initially. You can see the date and time. You can change year, month, day, hour, minute, and seconds. And you can press the set button to set those values. The third uh, subsection is USB and storage. The data storage is displaced in uh, here. If you want, for example, you have uh, conducted some s several tests. Uh, and if you want to uh, observe the um, memory condition, you just uh, press the refresh button and it says, for example, in 4% uh, of the memory is uh, full. If you want to clean the storage, you just press the clean. Uh, but before, make sure that before uh, cleaning the storage, you uh, <coughs> obtain the uh, saved data before cleaning the storage. Uh, how we are going to obtain them? You are just going to uh, insert a, a USB stick uh, in this uh, USB port and then mount USB drive and it will just make a communication and copy data logs. It will transfer all the uh, data to the USB stick and unmount USB drive. After unmounting the USB drive, you can safely uh, remove the USB sticks stick and you uh, you can clean the storage or just leave it like that and the last one is for the uh, password um, the admin password of uh, utest for this device is 88378 after entering this value as you can see calibration and admin uh, tabs are unlocked let's see the uh, admin menu first in admin menu, we have two subsections. One of them is gain, and the other one is the coefficients. In the gain, actually, these uh, gain and coefficient menus are for technical uh, use. The end user is not uh, suggested to change these values or is not suggested to uh, make any alterations in these uh, parameters. And the second top is again the working coefficients of the motor drive and so on. And the uh, other locked menu is calibration, which you, will, uh, you may need in the field or in the laboratory after the device has been delivered to you. Uh, you can uh, observe the calibration values from here. For example, it is selected as load over here. And read calibrations from memory if you press this button you will see the initial calibration values um, for, for example, vertical or horizontal uh, displacement transducer. You can see again the uh, calibration values. Uh, you can change the calibration point number from here, two, three, four, and up to eight. 
and uh, you can observe the uh, raw data uh, that comes from that transducer or load cell uh, as Li over here and the, uh, you can see the calibrated value from here uh, by pressing the uh, get raw data for example you at this zero you get a raw data and you increase the load to let's say 100 newton and you get the second row of data and so on after the completion of this uh, calibration you should press this uh, calibrate save calibration to memory button and all the uh, calibration values will be saved but again uh, just let me tell this uh, it is not suggested for an unauthorized person to change these values because uh, it may uh, result in the uh, wrong reading values. Now we have seen the uh, menus of the device. Uh, as I mentioned before, it, uh, you can test the specimens without using a computer software, but you'll only get some peak values. And if you uh, press the record uh, data on button, uh, you're going to get the raw values of the test. Uh, almost all of the standards it is uh, stated that at least three specimen has to be tested uh, one after each other uh, in a manner that increasing normal uh, stress for the sake of the video again I have already tested uh, with uh, two kilograms which will uh, which will be equal to uh, 196 newtons uh, on the specimen and uh, 4 kilograms on the hanger arm which will be uh, equal to 392 newtons on the specimen now the last part let's do it together uh, again we have uh, in the earlier stages of the video we have prepared our specimen now we are going to test it with 8 kilograms on the hanger arm which will be equal to uh, 785 newtons on the specimen Let's get started by uh, putting this uh, shearing box into the uh, device. Now we are going to place the shearing box inside the uh, box. We have a slotted structure over here which is going to be locked in this uh, button over here in the test box. And then after it, we are going to fix the bottom part of the shearing box by tightening the screws. Now, this, all this box and the bottom part of the shearing box is, a, uh, is like a rigid body. And then I'm going to position the linear displacement transducer. These are all have to be tightened. After arranging this one, I'm going to tight this knob and the important thing is this L-shaped aluminum uh, frame and the, uh, this part has some 2 or 3 millimeters gap between them. They shouldn't be uh, touching each other. During the test, our hanger arm should be horizontal to the ground and this yoke has to be vertical to the ground. To arrange that one, we have a uh, arranging counterweight over here. Uh, before we start, we are going to just take this one into the vertical position, and we are going to arrange its ha hanger arm scale by arranging this counterweight. Now this is horizontal. Okay. Now after that, we are going to. screw this one and arrange it so that it is a little bit uh, inclined from the horizontal level. This is because I'm going to uh, load the uh, machine with the uh, slotted weights and uh, I don't want our specimen to feel pre-stress, pre-normal stress. That's why uh, just before the test I'm going to release that uh, screw and let the, uh, the load be applied on the specimen. As I said, I'm going to test the specimen with 8 kilograms over here, which is the corresponding 
normal force is uh, 750 newtons, around 750 newtons. I'm pl placing 5 kilograms to the bottom. 2 kilograms, it makes 7. And 1 kilograms, it makes 8 kilograms. Now, I'm going to arrange the screw on the yoke just on top of the specimen. And now we, I'm going to tighten these knobs so that it all in a fixed state and there is no gaps, no um, shaking and in, there is no uh, play in the system. Now let's set, uh, let's set our parameters for starting the test. We have already set the test speed to 1 mm per minute. Home direction speed is already set. Jog speed is set. Maximum displacement is 8 mm. You can change it to 10 or 15. Maximum load is 5,000 uh, 5, uh, newtons, which is the capacity of this machine. Failure threshold is 200 newtons, and zero suppression is 10 newton, and the brake percentage is uh, 20 percent. And I'm just uh, clicking the record data button. Now I want to be um, I want to record the data on the Excel file as raw data. Now the second tab is the test type. I'm choosing conditional overflow here, which will be um, which will not be a cyclic test. It will just make the shearing operation and it will finish. And in the specimen type, I have a square uh, shearing box which has a 60 by 60 millimeters and the calculated area is shown at the bottom as 0 0.0036 meters square. Now I am turning to main menu and it is, uh, the test is ready to initiate. Now, uh, before I uh, uh, press the start button, I have to uh, remove and loosen the uh, screw so that the normal load can be applied onto the specimen by using this knob. Uh, I am applying normal force on top of the specimen. You may hear the clicking and cracking sounds of the specimen, which is sand. Now, the very important thing is, before uh, initiating the test, after applying the normal load, you have to remove these plastic pins. At this moment, we have a force on the specimen, and it is uh, in place together by the normal force, so we don't need these plastic screws. And also in the shearing operation, they will create unnecessary and meaningless load values on the load cell. Now I'm again checking the screws. Now it is ready to initiate the test. I'm just tearing the load vertical and horizontal displacement. Actually, we are not using the uh, vertical displacement, but if you want to observe the dilation uh, of the specimen during shearing operation, you may also put it uh, just top of here. Uh, as you may know, some shearing test operations has to be conducted after some consolidation, especially on clay material. Uh, now, uh, it is ready to initiate. Uh, I'm just pressing the start button and machine starts to work and the uh, graph will be drawn over here. The rest of it is we're just going to wait until the test finishes.
Now our uh, specimen has been sheared, as you can see a uh, uh, steep incline in the load values and there's a peak point and after that it just falls to the residual state. Uh, actually the rest of it will go uh, on further like this. We can end the test because as I said it just uh, shown all the characteristic of the sand. Now we are going to repeat this uh, exact same uh, testing procedure with uh, using the uh, U-Test uh, direct shear software. Again for the sake of the video I have already test, made the test with the software by um, with 2 kilograms, 4 kilograms and we are going to test it with 8 kilograms with software. But before starting let me just explain uh, how the connection between uh, the computer and the device is made. We are, just, uh, we are just going to need an Ethernet cable, which is already supplied with the uh, device. And you are just going to plug this cable in to the machine. And we are going to put the other end into the Ethernet inlet of the computer. Now after the Ethernet con connection, uh, we are just going to go inside to the uh, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, local area connection, properties, internet protocol version 4, properties again, and not obtain the IP address automatically, we will change it to use the following IP address, which is this one and the subnet mask will automatically uh, assign itself to it, to the box and we are just going to click OK close and we can close this page now uh, this is the direct shear program folder which all the related components uh, are inside this folder uh, let me remind you that the uh, Utest Direct Shear software does not need any installation. That's why we can just quickly click on the uh, program icon and we are going to choose Direct and Residual Shear. And here all the load, stress, horizontal displacement and vertical displacement uh, values are shown alive. Now, uh, let me just uh, explain briefly the program. We have a file uh, tab. Just next to it we have a setup tab and there is a test tab which is blank right now. First uh, thing I have to do is create a, a folder, new test folder, let's say test 1 and save it. And as, as you can see the test part, test tab is activated. Now uh, the open f uh, button just uh, works like this. I mean if you have, for example, let's say that you have conducted some several tests and you have to observe one of its results or you have to continue make testings with other samples, uh, you, have, you just have to click and choose that um, file and then uh, open it. And the uh, third button is Report tab. There is already a standard direct, residual, uh, direct shear and residual test report format is embedded. You can use it or you can click the report design and you can change all the characteristics of this report by using these uh, tools over here. For example, let me just uh, make a demonstration of it and just really quickly. I'm closing the program right now. And I, ha I already um, prepared a company logo, for example. I'm just going to put it inside the folder. Okay, over here, as you can see. Now I'm going to open the program again and create a new file, let's say again test 2, you can also choose the previous folder, uh, logo 1, I'll choose that logo and open it, 
Now in the report design, I have to choose picture and graph and add new picture graph. And the third picture is assigned and I'm changing it to logo and change property of the selected picture and it will just come over here. Now the second thing I'm going to do is arrange its uh, the logo's coordinates as 300 60 300 and 60 again and I'm just going to click the change property of the selected picture and you are going to just need uh, obtain the logo on the upper left side of the report and uh, as like this you can change every characteristics of this report now um, second page the second tab is uh, setup and it has two buttons on it you can change the uh, axes y and, and x axes uh, for the, uh, as required stresses normal and maximum displacement so on and the test speed button this is going to be very useful uh, as i as it is in the uh, device there is conditional overflow conditional horizontal displacement go conditional horizontal displacement go and return these are exactly the same uh, characteristics as in device now i'm just going to choose conditional overflow and one millimeters per minute and it's okay as i told you before i have already made tests with two kilograms and four kilograms on the hanging arm now it's time to make a test with eight kilograms and the corresponding value of the uh, this is by the way this is the third sample and the corresponding Newton value of the 8 kilogram on the sample is 785 Newtons again I have a square specimen which has a thickness of 60 millimeter and also you can observe here the first and second test graphs now uh, after setting these parameters it is ready to go to make an uh, make the third test I'm tearing the load horizontal displacement and vertical displacement is already zero and I can initiate the test either from here or from the test screen which is also already the same and I'm uh, initiating the test with sample node 3 yes and the test is started Now uh, the test has been reached to its final value, I mean the load has dropped and uh, the percentage, 20% uh, failure detection has been detected and the test has been uh, stopped. Now you can see the peak value of the uh, test, the graph. Now uh, this is all the testing procedure of three specimens. Now in the summary part you can see a cohesion value over here and uh, the angle of these uh, three lines and points um, is the internal friction angle now before starting you can uh, let me explain this part you can enter the company name address of the company sample details tested by and approved by and the dates of the tests and they will be all uh, shown in the report as you can see three graphs and the uh, shear strength versus normal strength 
graphs are displayed and all required values has been inserted into the uh, report format. Since we didn't enter anything here, they'll, uh, they'll just, they just show in blank. That's, that's all for use uh, instructions of the uh, U-Test uh, 2060 direct, direct and residual shear testing machine. Uh, thank you for watching.